Hey guys, how's it going? Welcome back for another review on a game from my childhood, Goo Troop for the Super Nintendo. Now, honestly, this is one of those games that I've rented from Blockbuster Video multiple times, and I play the hell out of it with my little brother. Now, just like other Disney games before it on the NES, like DuckTales, Darkwing Duck, The Little Mermaid, Chippendale's Rescue Rangers, this was based on the Goof Troop cartoon that aired during the Disney afternoon. But being that it was on a 16-bit system like the Super Nintendo, Goof Troop should have a lot more to offer than those NES titles. It should be bigger, badder, faster, or it could just be a little more goofier. Let's go ahead and find out. Goof Troop was developed, published, and released by Capcom in 1993 for the Super Nintendo. And I gotta say, I would definitely classify this game as an adventure puzzle game where you're gonna take the item usage from games like Link to the Past with the block pushing puzzles from games like Kickle Cubicle on the NES. Take those two games, mash them together, and you're definitely gonna get a game like Goof Troop. Now this game would become the first to actually be designed by Shinji Mikami, who would later be known as the father of Capcom's most popular horror franchise series, Resident Evil. The story of Goo Troop starts off on a nice sunny day in Spoonerville, where we see Goofy and Max fishing in the ocean. But out of nowhere, they spot a huge pirate ship sailing away from Spoonerville with their friends Pete and PJ on board. But they're being kidnapped. Now, I know what you're going to say. Why? Why would they kidnap some of our favorite, beloved Disney characters? Is it because they're pirates and that's what pirates do? Hmm, possibly, but in this case, no. They mistook Pete for Kill Hall Pete, their pirate captain. Now, being such the good neighbors that Goofy and Max are, they head off to chase the pirate ship to a nearby island. Upon landing on the island, they notice that it is crawling with pirates, and they set off to rescue their friends. When starting up the game, you'll be able to choose between two playable characters, Goofy and his son Max. But choose wisely, because even though these two characters play the same, they are quite different. Goofy being the adult is a lot stronger, allowing him to kill enemies with a single hit, but he's a lot slower. Max being younger is weaker than Goofy, but is a lot faster, making it easier for him to dodge enemies and getting around traps. If you just happen to have a friend around that you could play multiplayer with, then each person will take the role of one of those characters. And this will make the game a lot easier because you actually get to form some form of strategy on how to defeat the different enemies and it will make the puzzles a lot easier to solve because each player can push a different block when the timing just has to be right. The game consists of five different stages. The beach, the jungle, the haunted castle, the underground cave, and finally the pirate ship where Pete and PJ are being held captive. The goal of each level is to solve the various puzzles in order to reach the end of the stage and to defeat the boss that resides there. Now, Goofy and Max cannot fight enemies directly and must rely on throwing barrels and bombs kicking blocks into enemies, and luring them into the path of other enemy attacks. Throughout the game you'll come across oh so yummy fruit and sparkly gems that would make even Scrooge McDuck jealous. And believe me when I say you are going to want to collect as many as you can. 
The bananas and cherries that you'll find will give Goofy and Max more hit points. And if you collect a certain amount of these without being hit once, you'll gain extra lives. Collecting the red diamonds will also give you extra lives. And collecting the blue diamonds will earn you extra continues. And of course when you lose all your lives and you have no more continues then it's game over. But not to worry because there is a password system in place so you can start again on the stage that you died but at the very beginning. Besides the fruit and diamonds you'll also come across various different items throughout the game. You'll be able to find a grappling hook that will let you cross large gaps, stun enemies and let you collect items from far away. You'll also be able to find a bell that will lure enemies in order to solve different puzzles or set them up to be killed by various traps or other enemies. Other items include a candle that will light up dark areas, a shovel that will let you dig up the ground to find various items, and a wooden board that will let you cross large gaps acting as a bridge and keys to unlock different doors. Certain doors can only be opened when a certain condition has been made, such as solving a sliding block puzzle or defeating all the enemies on screen. If you just happen to be playing alone, then you'll be able to carry up to two items at a time, using the R button to switch between the two. But if you do have a friend to play with, then that's just fine, because both players will be able to carry one item each. Both players can swap the current item they are holding for a new item that they pick up off the ground. I guess Goofy didn't think to bring a tackle box on his fishing trip. Oh well. This limitation really isn't that bad though, because you usually have the item you need to get by an area that comes up. There's been only a few times where I had to go back and retrieve an item that I left behind, and when that actually happened, I didn't really have to backtrack that far. All in all, this is a great game for the Super Nintendo. The characters move in 8 directions, the colors are bright and vivid, and it is just a really fun to game to play, either alone or with a friend. The enemies can give you some trouble in certain rooms, and the puzzles can take somewhere between 1 to 5 minutes to solve. This is definitely a game meant for children, but for someone like me, growing up watching the Goof Troop cartoon series, watching the Disney Afternoon, and liking it, this game brings back those great memories. Capcom made a lot of great Disney games for the NES and Super Nintendo, and this is definitely one of them. Pick this up if you find this in the wild, because it is well worth it.